toboggan track. Um, I do agree with a lot of the way they, they do things because uh, safety on the road, but there is a lot of things that aren't safe. There really is, you know, like uh, nowhere to park, hard for a truck driver. In England's even worse. Sleeping in a, a lay-by right next to a freeway, right next to a run, things like that. It's, re it's not good. Then the, the general public, and people don't realise, that poor driver who hasn't had a very good sleep, he's back on the road next day, endangering everybody around him. Everybody around him. Then when that driver falls asleep or has an accident, a moment's lapse of concentration because he's that stressed trying to get somewhere, boom, driver's fault. He's the arsehole. He's the total twat, isn't he, all of a sudden? Every time, I tell you. So you, we got to really, really be careful there. That's the way it works. So when you pick your uh, groceries up in the supermarket and you think, huh, must have been grown at the back of the supermarket. I've got to let you into a little secret. There isn't a big field out the back of that supermarket, you know. No, sorry. It's all got to get there somehow. So one day, the rule makers might wake up and uh, change a few bits and things like that and realise that they're endangering uh, not the general public's life, not just a, a ten a penny truck driver. Somebody asked me, uh, one of my friends asked me on, um, uh, a, a guy I was at a bit older than me at school has just died over here. He was a team, team driver. Uh, and uh, I didn't really know him, but I knew of him and things like that. Him and his wife, they were doing team. Uh, can't, they think it was carbon monoxide in the truck. He had quite a big truck with a big sleeper, so it would have had, I can imagine it would have had a cooker and things like that. Anyway, my friend asked me, how, how would this have happened in the truck? Uh, don't they have carbon monoxide <laughs> um, uh, alarms in the truck? And it's like, no, you have to do all that yourself if you want that. And I explained because they probably had a cooker, there must have been a gas leak. I, I'm not saying it must have, there may have been a gas leak that caused this problem. Um, but I've never had a truck yet that's had a fire alarm uh, thing in, a, any a, any carbon monoxide fill, a, anything like that. And uh, I went on to explain to her, this truck, and I don't think, my last truck in England I don't think did it have as well, didn't have airbags. There's no safety in these trucks at all. None whatsoever. No, it's, the Freightliner had an airbag at the side, I think, but this one doesn't have any airbags. And uh, a lot of them don't. It just seems, you know, cars, vehicles have to go through rigorous scrutineering, crash tests, all sorts of shit before they can actually put them into production. Whereas a truck or a coach, I've noticed some coaches are terrible. You take that front away and there's no protection down there or nothing. It's, uh, it, it's a shitty deal. But hey, you can get another truck driver, can't you? There's plenty of them. So yeah, it opens the eyes to a lot of people who don't know anything about trucks to realise uh, what we're up against, really. And I don't see how the manufacturers get away with it. That's so pretty down here, isn't it? Who gives a shit about the safety when you're looking at views like that? This is... Yeah, if you come over to Washington State and you're on a fly drive or a tour or something, you want to get into Seattle, you want to find this road, which is the US-2, uh, comes out of Monroe, so you want to be uh, slightly north of Seattle, hang a right, just out of Mon uh, Monroe, go bar, come down there, this will take you over to Leavenworth, that'll do you for one day, you need a night in Leavenworth, go get the, uh, what is it, the uh, shank. Uh, in, I forget what the bar is now. There's, uh, well, there's plenty of restaurants down here. Absolutely amazing Bavarian food and stuff and what have you. So, plenty of steins of ale. Get to the beer fest if you can do that one right. Happy days. You'll enjoy every minute of it down here. It's a bit spendy on your hotels, but hey, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, then you come out of there, you need to follow that road along, and then you'll catch up with the uh, lookout for the US 20 which is the casket, woo, look at that little, what was that little weasel? Um, US 20, which will bring you back up, go slightly north and then back west. We, uh, I'll, I'll bring you back down into Cedar Wally, my hometown. And you can nip into the old timers or uh, the sportsmen and have a nice beer and a, and, uh, and a chill out in there. But th there's plenty of places to stop on the way. 
plenty of hikes as well. You've got loads of hikes. So you'd want to say in Leavenworth, then uh, your next night you might, you probably would make it up. Oh God, what's it called? Um, um, Winachi. Winachi have a night in there. Uh, that is a little western town over there. Really pretty. And there is plenty of places to see. Plenty of hikes, beautiful hikes as well. Not too difficult. For every extra, every every uh, every state of fitness, should I say, say if that makes sense. We'll Start in the river very shortly. You follow the light weather, the river all the way up, and as you start coming down, as you're coming up the other side, this uh, river you can swim in that in the uh, in the summer. That's warm enough to swim in. We've swam in it. It's, uh, it is nice, there's, there's, there's part and areas where you can swim. There's a bit in Leavenworth as well, uh, where you can all go swimming down there. Or some people might want to call it Leavenworth. Oh. And Cedro Woolly. That'll do for today.